So good morning from a very, very sunny morning in Dorset. Um, so I ran my moth trap last night and thought it'd be a good idea to uh, to share with you some of the uh, the lovely things that we might have caught. So I haven't delved into this yet. So this is uh, it's all untouched, so who knows what's inside. Um, before I do delve in, actually, it's probably worth explaining what's going on here. Uh, this contraption looks a little bit odd. Um, so this is a rather fancy sort of bespoke moth trap that uh, I've, I've been running um, here in my garden. And essentially what goes on is a bright bulb here, uh, a big funnel, and then a big sort of container where uh, all the moths kind of gather uh, throughout the night. Um, so a few theories as to why moths are attracted to light, just before we delve in. Um, like I say, there's a few theories knocking around, but I tend to go with a fairly simple one, is that moths uh, orientate themselves um, using UV reflections from the moon, and maybe even the stars as well, who knows. Um, but this bulb here emits a lot of UV. So if you've got the moon up here, which is emitting UV, um, potentially to the moths, another moon down here, it disorientates them and causes them to kind of swirl around. And during that confusion, they hit this funnel and fall into the trap. Um, and very quickly, again, before we delve in, um, moth surveys are very important. So moths are a really important part of a healthy ecosystem. Um, but in the last 40 or so years, uh, moths have declined in abundance by about a third. So that's quite a worrying statistic. So moth trapping like this is a really valuable source of information. So I send all my information off to be uh, kind of collated with other moth trappers around the UK. So enough of that, let's, uh, let's delve in. And I'm just gonna flip the camera around a second. Okay, cool. So you can see a little bit more about what's going on here. So this is that really bright bulb I was talking about and the funnel. So if I just take that off there, um, always worth doing this really carefully because you never know what's uh, what might be lurking. And in fact, there is a moth just right there, which is a little grey early tooth stripe. So we'll focus on some of the more um, interesting looking species as we delve in here. So this is a really good time of year to uh, to actually take up moth trapping. Um, if I was trapping in June or July, there this trap would be absolutely rammed with moths. Um, it'd be quite overwhelming actually if you're new to uh, to moth trapping. Um, I've caught up to about 150 species in just one night here, um, but this time of year there's only a selection of moths that we might catch, so um, it's a little bit simple and uh, a little bit more simple really. So you can see lots of egg boxes, so these are just convenient places for the moths to rest. So let's do a little bit of a tour. So what have we got here? We've got this gorgeously camouflaged species. If you imagine this against some lichen or some bark, uh, this is an early grey. Uh, next up, we've got. Um, by the way, there's a lot of fantastic names in the moth uh, in the moth world, um, but this one hasn't got a very imaginative name. This is a shoulder stripe. Um, I'd call it a middle stripe or something like that, rather than a shoulder stripe, but uh, you can see it's got lots of stripes on it, so that's okay. Um, what else have, oh, look at this, look at this. Right, let me just take this one out and get this one in the light. Wow. That is, uh, actually this is one of my favourite spring species. This is a purple thorn. And one of the uh, things that people often pick up on with moths, um, or a common question at least, is what's the difference between a moth and a butterfly? And a lot of people might say, well, butterflies close their wings and moths don't. Um, but you can see this one, uh, it's actually a bit of a half, halfway, halfway house. It's, uh, it's got its wings slightly up, um, but that's a distinguishing feature of the purple thorn. Um, there is another species of thorn which, uh, which occurs uh, this time of year, actually. Um, so it's quite possible we have one in the trap. Um, so what else have we got? Uh, it's an interesting little species. Um, very common this time of year, and one that people will see in the, in any garden, to be honest. Uh, this is a Hebrew character. So you can see there's a little black mark there, um, which is a little bit like the letter, I believe, N in Hebrew, I think. I uh, hope that's right. Um, but yeah, very common species, one you'll see in your own garden. Uh, let's keep going through. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of the spring moths are a little bit brown and a little bit uh, drab. In fact, this one here is so drab they've named it the clouded drab. Um, this one, however, um, it's got a lovely name. It's called the red chestnut. Um, there's a few different species of chestnut moths. One's just called the chestnut, um, but this one's a bit redder than the others, so this is the red chestnut. 
Uh, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So there we go. So we saw the purple thorn earlier on, and this one is the early thorn. And this one keeps its wings completely, uh, completely together. Look at that. So, sorry about the uh, shaky camera work. Um, my coffee's probably kicking in by now. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of moths on this uh, on this egg tray. Uh, more Hebrew characters, another early grey. Quite a common species here actually where I'm trapping. Uh, the caterpillars of this one feed on uh, honeysuckle. So uh, quite a regular species. Let's keep going. Oh wow. Oh, wow, wow, look at that. Fantastic. I'll try and keep the camera nice and steady on this one. And get it in focus. There we go. So this is a brindled beauty. And uh, it certainly is a beauty, and you can see um, perhaps why it's called a brindled beauty. Um, all those kind of lovely uh, brownie speckly broken markings on there. Um, this is actually one of the first species I caught, I think, when I started moth trapping about 12 or 13 years ago. Um, but more Hebrew characters, more early greys, another clouded drab, another red chestnut. So actually this is not a bad trap at all. And uh, the reason it's probably quite a good trap is, uh, oh, another early thorn, fantastic. And the reason it's probably quite a good trap is because uh, it was quite mild last night, so the ideal conditions are, uh, are nice and warm, which in spring uh, we don't get that many warm nights, so we're really lucky. And, uh, oh, there we go. So this is a new one for the year as well, so lots of new species coming out because it's spring. This is a muslin moth. There we go, so this is the male. And the females are actually um, totally white with black spots, so very, very different, but it's generally the males you see in the moth traps. So that's a, a quick sort of um, whiz through the species uh, from last night. And I'll write all these up and uh, get all the records sorted. Um, but I'm just going to flip the camera back around again. Right, there we go. Um, so yeah, so I'll write up all these species and uh, get them all sort of uh, sent off and submitted. Um, but if anybody does want to take up uh, moth trapping in their own garden, obviously we're all stuck at home at the moment for the next few weeks. And uh, like I say, things are starting to get quite interesting in the moth world. So it's well worth having a go. And you don't need a fancy trap like the one I've got here. Um, you'll get moths attracted to your windows. Um, so do take pictures, uh, send them in. Um, we can uh, identify them for you. Um, you could try putting a sheet out up against a fence and putting a bright light next to it. That actually does work. Um, and there's other ways as well by putting, uh, if you can spare a tiny bit of red wine, um, and you can use that to attract moths. It's very sugary. So uh, best way is to dip it in some uh, cotton rope and uh, soak it for a little while and hang it off a tree. You'll get moths visiting that, having a great time on the wine. So lots of ways you can get involved and uh, We'll hopefully be posting some ways of uh, finding more about finding out more about your garden moths um, over the next day or two as well. But do send your pictures in. Like I say, we'll identify them. And uh, yeah, and the most important thing, have fun. <laughs>